are journey of learning Laplace transform. So today uh, I'm not going to do anything new. We are already halfway through your course on Laplace transforms. Uh, uh, what I will do today instead is take a quick review of what we have done till now. So everything we have done, I'll recall. So in case you are missing things in your previous classes, you will not understand this. Only little bit. Most of it. If you haven't understood most of it, you have to see the previous lectures. It is hope most of you are not in that state. So whatever you do, you may have some doubts. It will get cleared in this lecture, I hope. Uh, so what did we do? We found we defined Laplace transform of a real function ft, which was defined like this: Laplace of ft is e power minus st ft dt integral of this uh, integral limits t varying from zero to infinity. Uh, observe that Laplace is a transformation or it's sort of function of a function which takes functions in independent variable t and returns functions of s. We have seen this, just to emphasize I'm telling this again. You see here, this ft is some particular function of t. When I multiply by e power minus st, I'll get a function in both s and t. And I'm integrating with respect to t. So I'll get, when I integrate, I'll get a function in both s and t. But then I'm substituting limits of t as 0 and infinity which means t is no more you can't see that t in the expression so i'll be left with only s so the resulting expression is a expression or it's a function in s our s and t are related really there's no relation so both are two independent variables so l of ft is f of s and this is a standard notation. All through this course we have been using this and we will continue to use this. Whenever I write capital F S, it's understood there is a small function f whose Laplace transform is the Laplace transform happens to be capital F of s. This is a notation. We will keep using this very often. So L of F T is F of S. The point to be observed, L is a transformation which takes functions of T as input and returns functions of s is the bottom line. And one of the most important properties which we have exploited, which we have used is linearity. The plus transform is a linear transformation, which means if, I, if you give me two functions, f and d, f and g, l of f of t plus g of t, l of f t plus l of g t. And similarly, if you give me any real number, or even complex number, l of a f t is a times l of f t. So this these two properties together constitutes what is known as linear property. Since Laplace satisfies these two properties, we say Laplace is a linear transformation, Laplace transformation is a linear transformation, and we write it in one way. So one L of A F T plus B G T is A L of T plus B L G T. We will use this in and out. So to find Laplace of various functions. And then we found the Laplace of some very elementary functions. The proof of this is not very near at all, but then you should know the proof. It's not difficult. Uh, I have learned these proofs in the lecture. Laplace of constant function 1 is 1 by s. Laplace of e power a t is 1 by s minus a. Laplace of sin a t is a by s square plus a square. The plus of cos at is s by s square plus s square and is a by s square minus s square. The plus of hyperbolic cos s by s and the plus of tau n, where n is an integer, is n factorial by s to the power of n plus 1. And when n is not an integer, any number bigger than minus 1, p power p, it is gamma p plus 1 by s to the power of p plus 1, where gamma and the gamma function. So these, uh, for your examination purposes, these eight will suffice. If you want, as I said, you can check on the net or some standard textbooks. You will find Laplace transform of various functions. And for your examination purposes, these eight are sufficient. Of course, seven are sufficient, mostly. 
And uh, then what did we do? Apart from finding Laplace transform of these standard functions, we picked up functions from standard functions, from elementary functions, and tried to find Laplace transforms of those functions. For that, we used a linearity and table of Laplace transforms. Let me recall what we did there. Something like this. Find Laplace transform of 5 minus 4 e power 5 minus 7 sin 2t plus e power minus 8t plus 7 to the power of t. So this is a function of t. Now I want to find Laplace of this. How do I do that? Basically, I use linearity and the table of Laplace transforms. They are the only two things which we know. So Laplace of this given function is essentially Laplace of each term added or subtracted accordingly, whether you are adding this term here, you are subtracting this term here, you are adding this term. So accordingly, you write Laplace of each term. Laplace of 5, Laplace of 40, minus Laplace of 40, plus 5, minus Laplace of 7, sin 2t, etc, etc. How do I evaluate this? I pull out constants. This is true. This first part is true because L of ft plus gt is L of ft plus L of t. That's what I have used here. And for the second part, I will pull out the constants. So pulling out the constants, I get this. 5 L of 1 is 5 it is constant function 5, same as 5 times constant function 1. Similarly, 4 I can pull out, 7 I can pull out, etc. etc. And now Laplace of 1, t power 5, sin 2t, t power minus 8t, and uh, this is a bit of a, uh, I'm sure you all know this, 7 power t is same as e to the power of t log 7. Uh, I'm doing it the last couple of years, such things. So I have to, 7 power t, I have returned it in a form for which I can find Laplace in z. That's essentially what I have done here. So now I know Laplace of each of them. And I just write it up by Laplace of 1 to 1 by S, Laplace of 2 to 5 is 5 factor by S power 6, Laplace of sin 2 to is 2 by square plus A, A square A is 2 here, and Laplace of e power minus A2 is 1 by S plus A, e power A2 is 1 by S minus A, and here A happens to be log 7, so it will be 1 by S minus log 7. As I said, don't try to evaluate this or simplify this, just leave it this way for us to try to simplify it. So essentially we have used linearity of Laplace transforms and we have used table of Laplace transforms, which gives me standard uh, Laplace of standard functions. What do you mean the table of Laplace transform the exam? You have to remember these things. The only way to remember is to solve a few problems, then automatically you remember in a language. Laplace of sin 80 is a by s square plus a square. Laplace of cos 80 is s by s square plus a square, etc. You remember these things only if you solve the few problems. And then I did not do it, I did not show explicitly this kind of example when we are doing the first time. So now I'm going to do this is the cube of hyperbolic sine function. I told you what is the rule to find uh, f. Any power of hyperbolic functions, if I want to find a plus transform of that, how do I do it? Just use the definition. Here, sin h2t is between the e power 2t two minus e power minus 2t by 2. This is the definition of hyperbolic sign. Those of you who still haven't understood this, please understand this. This, this is a formula. This is actually a this is actually the definition of hyperbolic sign. e power 2t two minus e power minus 2t by 2. Uh, so now take cube. So cube it off. Uh, a minus b whole cube, which is a cube uh, minus uh, t a square b plus 3 a b square minus b cube. So that's what I have done here. So e power 2 t whole cube is e power 60 and 3 a square b. So 3 I have written minus 3 a square b. Minus 3 I have written. Then a square is e to the power of 4 t into the power minus 2t, so I have the power 2t, and similarly plus 3ab square. So 3a is e power 2t, b square is e power minus 4t, so I have the power minus 2t, so plus 3e power minus 2t, minus e power minus 2t whole t, which is e power minus 60, divided by 8. So if you want to find Laplace of this, you will be So Laplace of uh, 
field of hyperbolic sensitivity is the plus at the square root three. And that how do I evaluate? Pull out one by eight and I get the plus of equal to sixty, etc., etc. These things we know are plus of equal to sixty one by s s e six. This is this one by s minus two, etc., etc. So in general, so basically remember we need to know the definition of sign hyperbolic sign and expand it and find uh, the plus of each of them. Use the standard table. Before you use, you need to uh, use the fact that uh, Laplace is linear. And using linearity very heavily here. You see, every step from here to here to come, to come from here to here, I have used linearity. Uh, of course, I used twice on the linearity. So I pulled out constant also, and I have broken up the linear function into some of the some functions. So that is what, uh, that's the main property of Laplace. And then I also told, uh, of course, I told several examples about you know, powers of sine, powers of cos, not all powers, sine square, cos square. In that case, we use the property, the, uh, the formula which says cos 2t is cos squared minus sine square, which is same as cos 2t is 2 cos square minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine square. So we use this formula if there is. Uh, uh, term of the type, if I want to find the class of sine square 5p and things like that, or cos square 7p, something like that, cos square 8p, sine square 8p, we use that formula and it. And then we came across this kind of formula where, uh, this kind of expression where we needed to find the class of product of sine and cos, maybe sine sine or cos cos or sine cos, whatever. So these are the three formulae which you must remember, this somehow you must remember this. And please cross check whether I have written correctly. Uh, it's mostly, I think the first time once I have written, it will be wrong and minus I have missed out. Uh, I hope I have done the correct thing now, but still uh, I request you to check this works. So sine AB, sine BT, half cos of A minus BT minus cos A plus BT. How, how is this useful? So if I am trying to find Laplace of sine A into sine B, sine AT into sine BT, which is same as Laplace of this whole thing. That is easy to find because now I use linearity, I pull out half and Laplace of this is half Laplace of this minus half Laplace of this. Laplace of this I know how to find. Laplace of cos and constant times t is s by s square plus this constant square and similarly for this. So then I can find I, by using the linear linearity property of Laplace transform, I can find Laplace of sin a sin b. Sin AT, sin BT. Similarly, sin AT cos BT. So that also has a formula in terms of sin A plus B and A minus B. Similarly, cos A cos B. Cos AT cos BT if I want to find the plus, it is half the plus of cos A plus BT plus half cos A minus BT. So this again I can find uh, in similar things. So these are the standard techniques to find Laplace of various functions which are built from elementary functions. Uh, this is a important point. When I have to use these repeatedly, for example, if I have a term like sine AT, sine BT, cos CT, then what do I do? First I expand using, sine, uh, using this formula, sine BT into cos CT, I can expand using this. So I get to sine sine term. Multiply that by this sine outside, so I get sine square and uh, but not sine square, I get something sine into sine minus sine into sine of different arguments are different. So sine into sine, I use this formula. So if you use this formula twice, one of the uh, formula twice, not one, maybe twice you have to use these three formula, I mean one of these three or two of these three. But that's how I should put two of these three formula you have to use twice. Then you will get answer for uh, Laplace of three terms, the uh, product of three terms, sine, sine, cos, or sine, sine, sine. Uh, sine, sine, sine is okay, but sine, if uh, arguments are same, it is sine cube. That I will show you how to do it. With the sine 5t, sine pt into sine 7 something like that, then you have to use this formula twice. Uh, I, I gave you an example, several, two examples I gave before, so I don't think I'll spend time on that. 
uh, oh, I did not give an example for this. Groups of sentiment. We stole the method and then that's it. So maybe now that we have some time, uh, I will try to explain how to find the class of groups of signs and signs. You can match in this also, it's the same thing, use linearity and the one of the usual trigonometry formula. So here is an example. Now I want to find the class transform of cos cube of phi t. Of course, you can try to use cos phi t into cos phi t into cos phi t and use this horrible formula twice. Cos A is also 5 and B is also 5, so this will become 0, then I'll get 1, etc. etc. You can do it. The easier thing is to use formula. Cos cube 80 is 1 by 4 3 cos 80 plus cos 380. Similarly, sin cube 80 is 1 by 4 3 sin 80 minus sin 80. You must have seen these formula uh, when you studied the uh, sine of 3x. Sin 3a is something, right? 3 sin a uh, minus 4 sin cube a. That you must have seen in your PC. So that is what we are using. But here I am solving for sin cube. There we were solving in the left hand side of sin 3x. Here left hand side is sin cube. That's all the difference is. It's the same formula. So here cos cube 5t. So I use the formula cos cube 80 is 1 by 4 3 cos 80 plus cos 380. Please know if you don't know this formula, it's very difficult to solve this problem. So you must be very familiar with all your trigonometry formula. So the class of cos cube 5t is nothing but now I use linearity of the class. 3 by 4 the class of cos 5t plus 1 by 4 the class of cos 3 times 5t that is 15. What do I can find? Cos 5t I know how to find. This is s by s square plus 5 square. This is 15 by s square plus 15 square. So I just plug in those things and so go follow over. The plus of cos cube phi t is three by four etc etc. So again, just nothing much we are doing. Just use one of the old formula which we are going to do at PC. And then use linear. Uh, I want you to uh, what I want you to observe is this is the same thing we would be we would have been doing if you wanted to integrate. Like let me emphasize this. If instead of the question find the plus transform of cos cube phi t. The question was find integral of cos cube phi t. What would you do? Same thing would be doing. Instead of L, they will have in I. So I of cos cube phi t is 3 by 4. I of cos phi t plus 1 by 4. I of cos 15. These are easy to find. I of cos phi t and I of cos 15 t is direct straight. So that's what you have been doing. If you, if you are asked to integrate, same technique will be followed to find the plus transform. So, this is also an integration, it's not of the function directly. You multiply the function by e power minus h. So, nothing very big about what methods you are trying to do. It's the same. Uh, then we saw, so these are the first principles were uh, basically use linearity uh, and try to compute the plus transform of different kinds of functions. Functions made out of elementary functions. Not because they are all elementary functions. Uh, some are uh, uh, difference of elementary functions. We never asked the plus transform of p power p divided by sine p. That kind of, there is no multiplication also. p power p into sine p, how to find the plus transform. Because multiplication is not a very nice operation in calculus. The operations do not expect multiplication. You know, the, the, the differentiation of product of two functions is not the product of differentiation of functions. So, there's a like this, this is easy, but it's not straightforward. So, similarly for integration, integration of product of two things is not product of integration. So, you have to struggle a bit more. The formula is a bit more complicated. Similarly, if you have uh, we, uh, we can so easily find Laplace of product of functions. But we can find Laplace of sums and differences. That's what we have done. Sums and differences of elementary functions. That's what we have done. Now, <coughs> so next we saw uh, so a list of properties of Laplace transforms, which uh, actually expanded our horizon on you know, 
finding the class of functions. More different, more complicated functions we could find the class of. So, what were those properties? These were the four properties change of time or scale or change of scale property. Obvious name because it just says scale changing this time. Time is f of t, l of f of t is f of s. Now, in this formula, you get to know what is L of f of a, that means t is multiplied by a, a t. So, that's how you change the time. So, then what happens to uh, Laplace is it, uh, it is 1 by a times capital F of x by a. Remember this notation, this is very important. This is a notation, but it's a bit confusing at times. So, L of f t, L of small f t is capital F of x. This is, you know, if you forget your name, you cannot forget this notation. The class of small f is capital F of S. And the second rule or shifting rule of change of frequency ring, it says the class of e power a t into f t is capital F S. See here one illustration of what happens when you take product of two functions, not arbitrary functions. One of the functions is e power a t. And there we don't get uh, the class of e power a t into the class of f t. No, we don't get that. Don't respect that. Uh, instead of that, what it does is then you take the class of the small f and replace s in that by s minus k. That is what this formula says. So the power of this formula is that if I know the class of f t, I know the class of e power a t. And first we want the power of this formula. If I know the class of f t, which is capital F of s, then the class of e power a t f t is same as the class of f t, but instead of s, you write s minus a. Where did the a come from? a is from a. This follows straight from definition. The proof of it is very easy, straightforward. Uh, so I'm So let us make this blue class. And then the class of e power n of t is this is like this, whereas now I'm multi instead of multiplying by e power a t, I'm multiplying by e power n. So when I do this, I'll get this formula, which is T power, the class of t power n of t is minus 1 power n and its derivative of capital f of s. That means saying f of s to differentiate n times and change the sign depending on n is odd or even. Uh, that is the answer for the class of t power n into f. Uh, the most important case we in general, theoretically we know then if you if you know the class of f t and you know the class of t to the power of 100 into f t also. All I have to do is differentiate 100 times of the same thing. Uh, but anyway, theoretically, I know that. Uh, most useful part of this formula is when n equal to 1. When n equal to 1, I have written down this formula explicitly. So if you put n equal to 1, I get L of t of t is minus first derivative of f s. That's what it's written here. The class of t of t is minus first derivative of f s. So this is a very useful formula because whenever you want to multiply a function by uh, e uh, and find its Laplace, this formula is going to be useful. And then finally, we have a class of f t by t. When I divide f t by t, what happens to the Laplace? It becomes this integration of the class of f t. That's what this formula says. I want you to see a relation here. You see, differentiation and integration are inverses of each other. That's how you are taught integration. Integration is reverse process of differentiation. Similarly, multiplication is the reverse process or inverse of division. So here, when you take division, it becomes integration. When it is multiplication, it becomes differentiation. This is a very deep consequence. And for your course, if you study deeper mathematics, you will see this is not coincidence. This is something which is sort of planned out. The theory came up for people saw these particular cases. So L of T of T is minus D by DS of S, and L of F T by T, you can think of F T by T is L of T power minus 1 F T. So here, minus 1 times differentiate means T. But how? In some way, since one can try to remember both this formula in one shot.
to be recalled. Laplace of f t by t is Laplace of t power minus one into f t. So that means it's like Laplace of t power n into f t where n is minus one. Minus one means here you take minus one of the derivative means integral. That's precisely what we are. But it limits s to infinity. Anyway, this uh, just you know, ways to try to remember this formula. Actually. But in any case, you have to remember all these four formula. Definitely, these last three are very crucial. L of uh, e power a t f t, capital F of s minus a, the class of t power n f t, particularly L of t f t is minus d by d s f of s. The class of f t by t is integral of f of s from s to infinity, s to infinity. Let us we solve several problems based on this. Very elementary ones. For example, if it's very easy to find Laplace of f t, I will ask find Laplace of e power a t f t. Typical example would be find Laplace of e power phi t into sine three t. So we have Laplace of sine three t. So in that we replace s by whatever s minus a where a is e power a. A comes from e power a t. Similarly, this also. If I know Laplace of f t, then I have Laplace of t f t. Try using it for polynomials. It's quite interesting. So take uh, what I meant is means I'm not I'm not going to write it, but I will explain to do it. If f t is say one, then the class of t into one is the class of t. That must be minus d by ds of f of s. What is f of s? It is one into one by s. So derivative of one by s with a negative sign. It is one by s square, which is correct, which is correct. Similarly, we try to find the class of all uh, t power n. The class of t power n is the class of t into t power n minus 1. So now t power n minus 1, the class is more, try to find it by reduction or something like that. So this gives you a proof of one of the things which we did before. The class of t power n is n factorial divided by s to the power of n minus 1. You can try such stuff. And the class of f t by t is integral so if i know if i know the uh, integrating laplace of ft is easy then i will use i can find easily laplace of ft by t so anyway let me show you some examples which are uh, very easy it's not at all difficult but uh, they look different from what uh, i showed you before so let me write down here, here it is show that Laplace of cos h a t into f t is 1 by 2 capital F of s minus a plus capital F of s plus a. This is one part. Second part is show that Laplace of sin h a t into f t is half capital F of s minus a minus capital F of s plus a. There are two problems here. And then using Hanks evaluation, that is use these to evaluate Laplace of cos h a t into sin b. So what does you come to this part? I mean, you go slowly. There are three parts, three problems here. So you will see if you solve one, the others will follow. In fact, you see this problem is a particular case of this where f t is sin b t, uh, and I know the class of sin b t, and then I replace uh, b by s minus a, in the s by s minus a, in that that's all. So what I'm trying to say is these problems are related, they are very similar. So let me start with this. Let me first um, Laplace or oh, so what is this? This says when I multiply a function by hyperbolic sine or cos, then I know I can find Laplace in this. That's what this statement says. If I know Laplace of f, I know Laplace of hyperbolic cos into f, or I know Laplace of hyperbolic sine into f. I will just follow this formula. I'm very interested to remember this formula, you can very easily uh, derive this formula. So let me show you how to do that. First, let me do the first one. The first one says Laplace of cos h a t uh, f t is half uh, uh, capital F of s minus a plus capital F of s t s a. Uh, so this is the standard notation I keep. I just told you that I would not recall now, but this is to display for Laplace of small f t is capital F of s. So let's do the first one. So the first one is Laplace of cos h a t f t is half of f of s minus a plus half of s plus a. That's what I'm trying to prove here. 
So how do I go? Remember, I told you this before also. Whenever you see hyperbolic cost, just don't bother. Use the definition. Because hyperbolic cost is just a notation for uh, that e power a t plus e power minus a t by t. It's another notation for exponential function. That's all the things. So let us use that directly. That means I want to find Laplace of this, which means I replace cos h a t by half e power a t plus e power minus a t. So Laplace of this is Laplace of this. So how do I find that? Now I will open up the bracket. I'll expand this. So I'll get and at the same time half is of course a constant. So I can put it out of L. So that's what I have done. Half L e power a t into f t. Plus half L e power minus a t into f t. So just use linearity of Laplace transform. That's all I have done. Using linearity of Laplace transformation, I'll do this. Now, do I know anything about Laplace of e power a t into f t? Should ring a bell. What is the bell? Here is the property which we are looking for, which is very important, I think. The class of e power a t f t is capital F of s minus a. So if I know that's what the moment you see that you should remember. If I know the class of f t, I know the class of e power a t. So that is what we are using here. So now the class of e power a t f t is what if I know the class of e power uh, f t, which I know because I'm given the capital F of s, then I know the class of e power a t. So that means this is nothing but capital F of s minus a. This is actually directly that formula which I told is very important. Or nothing else to do. Similarly, for this, e power minus a t f t in place a by minus a. So you get f of s plus a. The class of e power minus a t f t is capital F of s plus a. These two follow because that is the formula. Formula is e power a t f t. The plus of that is capital F of s minus a. So that's all. Right. That's all. Right. Over. So what has been asked to prove has been proved. Now, the class of cos h t f t is half capital F of s minus a plus capital F of s plus a. It's as simple as that. Uh, now, similarly for sin h t, sin h t f t also is the same thing. What will happen? I will have used definition of sin h t, which means it's the same thing except that this will have been a minus. If this is minus, if this is also minus, if this is also minus. So that is precisely what that formula was. You see, you see, it's the same for cos h t or sin h t. Right hand side is the same except that this plus becomes minus. So that basically because sin h t is e power a t minus e power minus a t by t, or cos h t is e power a t plus e power a minus a t by t. So the plus is showing up here as plus, and this minus is showing up as minus. That's all. So you can very uh, easily see these proofs. They are very simple and straightforward. Now, using this, we want to evaluate uh, cos hyperbolic a t into sine b t. This is product of uh, a hyperbolic cos and a normal sine, usual sine. Product of hyperbolic cos and usual sine is what we have done. Here. So use that formula now. Whatever we just now began. In fact, the problem itself says n c evaluate. We use whatever we have proved just now to evaluate this particular Laplace. So we use this formula: Laplace of cos h a t f t is half capital F of s minus a plus half uh, capital F of s plus a, where f t is sine b t. If I replace s t f t by sine b t, I get this. So that means I will have to first find Laplace of f t. That is Laplace of sine t that I know by the table it is b by s square plus b square. In this, I will replace s by s minus a if I want to get this. Because this is nothing but capital F of s minus a. Capital F of s is b by s square plus b square. So f of s minus a is b by s minus a whole square plus b square. And similarly, f of s plus a is b by s plus a whole square plus b square. So Add both of them and uh, divide by two, take average of the two, and you have ended up, you have ended up with Laplace of cos h into f. That's what we will do. 
I hope it's clear. It's, this is all very straightforward telling in uh, formula. There is nothing in this. Even not much formula or okay. definition of sine hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic, and that shifting rule. Uh, shifting rule, it said uh, Laplace of uh, e power at ft is capital F of s minus a, capital F of s is Laplace of small f t. That's all we have used, nothing else here. But there are, what I wanted to appreciate is even though those formula are very few and very simple, together they make up a grand structure. There's so much of symmetry in all these things which we do. Oh, that's what makes this part of mathematics interesting. After all, it's very useful in solving differential equations. Uh, similarly, one can evaluate product of sine or cosine with hyperbolic sine. So there is nothing special about cos h a t sine b t. I could have given you cos a t and sine h b t. In sine h b t, and cos a t. Then I would have to use this formula. Which formula would I have to use? This one. Here I have proved whenever you multiply sine hyperbolic with some function, what is the Laplace? So if in particular f t is cos b t, that means sine hyperbolic a t cos b t, then I can I just know the plus of cos bt and that I have to replace in cos bt s by s minus k. That's how you get sine hyperbolic kt into cos bt. Similarly, sine hyperbolic into sine also you can do. It's just a capital F will change. So, so basically any product of hyperbolic function with normal sine function, then you, you, you can use this formula. And then uh, nobody remembers this formula, it's very easy to derive. Basically, we use the definition of sine hyperbolic, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic yes. So all this we are done. So this is another problem. Uh, find Laplace of 1 minus cos 3 t by t. Um, uh, anyway, so how to do this? So I'll observe that this function is the form, the given function. Is the plus I want to find is of the form ft by t. So how do I find the plus of ft by t? Oh, I know a formula. So the formula is the integral of capital F of x. What is the formula? This is the formula. So whenever I have the plus of ft by t to be formed, I just need to find the plus of f and be able to integrate. That is very important. So basically, you should know how to integrate. Otherwise, these problems will make even more difficult. So Laplace of F T by T. So remember this formula. Laplace of F T. We have already used this formula several times in the number three or four or something. Oh, yes, number three. I think. So Laplace of F T by T is integral of Laplace of F T from S to infinity. This is what I use. So in the given problem, it is 1 minus cos 3t by t. So ft is 1 minus cos 3t. So can I find Laplace of 1 minus cos 3t and then integrate that? That becomes a problem. So that's basically a PUC level problem. So let us check that. How to do that? So this is the problem. 1 minus cos 3t by t. I want to find Laplace of this. So I use this formula, Laplace of ft by t is integral of f of s ds from s to infinity with ft equal to 1 minus cos 3t. If ft is 1 minus cos 3t, what is capital F of s? That means what is the Laplace of this? Laplace of this is capital F of s. Laplace of this is Laplace of this minus Laplace of this. Laplace of this means Laplace of 1 is 1 by s. Laplace of this means Laplace of cos 3t, which is s by s square plus 3 square. So I have two terms in capital F of S. Laplace of 1 minus cos 3t has two terms. One is 1 by S, another is S by S square plus 1. Now Laplace of this t by t, I'm using this formula. Laplace of 1 minus cos 3t by t is nothing but integral of Laplace of 1 minus cos 3t. But uh, Laplace of 1 minus cos 3t, you just see it's 1 by s minus s by s square plus 9. So I have to integrate this. That's our biggest job now. How do I integrate this? So let us check. 1 by s, I know integral is log s. So s by s square plus 9, what is this integral? Remember how to do this? I'm sure you know how to do this. The numerator is derivative of denominator. 
with a factor 2 missing, so you multiply and divide by 2. So I get a half into 2s by s squared plus 9. Then the numerator is derivative of the denominator. So then the integral of the whole thing is log of the denominator. So minus half will remain outside and it will be log of s squared plus 9. And everything between the limits is to infinity. Lower limit of this is s. Now higher, uh, larger limit is, upper limit is infinity. Let's see how to evaluate this. Ah, so, a priori it looks a bit pathetic because you see infinity is always you have to be a bit careful. This is what I told you in one of the first lectures, initial lectures. That a lot of things in Laplace is, uh, you know, looks like improper integral and things like that. But uh, they never ask the question where it's actually really improper. Uh, even though it looks like improper, it is not improper. So, I show that again. I showed you these kind of examples once before. There's some more subtlety here, so I'm showing you this thing. So how do you evaluate this? This is basically an algebra problem. Not even calculus, it's an algebra problem. So log s minus half log s squared plus 9. Somehow I want to put these two together. Log a minus log b is uh, log a by b. I want to put them together like that. So what I will do, I'll write log s as half into 2 log s. Why do I do this? Then I can take this 2 up here and call it half log s square. Right? That's what I have done here. Oh, I have not done that here. So I will call this half log s square and I can pull out half common from both of them. I will get log of s square minus log of s square plus 9. So this log s I return as half log s square. I am sure you have done it several times. So then log a minus log b will become log a by b. So it will be log s square by s square, s square plus 9. And both uh, limits are s and infinity. So, so what's the upshot of it? Log, the plus of 1 minus cos 3t by t turns out to be half log s square by s square plus 9 between s and infinity. Not <laughs> Again, as I keep on telling you, nothing you, what you learned new here. What new thing you learned was used at this step. The plus of somebody by t is integral of that somebody. That's all. Rest of it all is PUC integration and taking limits and how to evaluate these functions and things like that. So you must, if you are not familiar with what you have already done in class 10, these things look very scary. If you know that, then it's just hardly any so how to do this? Log of s square by s square plus 9 from s to infinity. So that's what this is. Log of uh, Laplace of 1 minus cos 3 t by t is half log of s square by s square plus 9 between s and infinity. Uh, so this is nothing but, uh, I try to put s equal to infinity, but I cannot put s equal to infinity directly. So what do I do? I take limit, limit of this whole expression as s to infinity. Minus s I can put directly, it's a finite number, so I'll just put it there. Now, how to evaluate this? I have already shown you one similar example, not quadratic, but it was a say, degree one expression. Degree one expression. Uh, this is also very similar to that. You basically, what do you do? You guess how do you evaluate this limit? Yeah, any of you might have guessed it correct. You basically divide numerator and denominator by s square so that I will get 9 by s square here and 1 here and 1 here. So when as s tends to infinity, 9 by s square tends to 0. So I get a 1 here and a 1 here, which is basically 1 by 1 is a finite number. So that's precisely what I have done also. Second expression, there is nothing much to do. Just return it as it is. So first expression is half limit of logarithm of 1 by 1 plus 9 by s square. Basically, I divided both numerator and denominator by s square. And then let s tend to infinity. If I let s tends to infinity, this s square also goes to infinity. 9 by s square becomes 0. So 1 plus 0. 1 by 1 plus 0, which is 1. So log 1. Log 1 is correct. 0. So log 1 is 0. I get minus half of log of s square by s square plus 9. I don't like minuses. For some strange reasons, people don't like minus. It's negative. So you take that negative thing inside. 
which means it is log of a squared by a squared plus one over the power of minus one, which means reciprocal. We are also going to like minus one, so we put it the reciprocal of it. So it will be half log of a squared plus minus mm -hmm. a squared. Don't try to simplify this, leave it as this because this is just a number log of something. So we can't simplify this further. So this is the answer. So I just wanted you to understand again in this solving this problem, what you have learned in this semester was only this equation, this equality. Laplace of ft by t is integral of Laplace of ft from s to infinity. All, all your whole of your effort is apart from remembering this formula is how to evaluate these integrals, which you must have done in your class too. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I am not doing very, very non trivial integration here. But you have to play around with these functions, particularly log is very innocuous when you, know. you never know when it will get complicated, when it will be simple, straightforward. So please go through this example again. These are examples which examiners like. Means I have already shown you previously e power 80 minus e power b2 divided by 2. So I thought I'll show one with trigonometry. Uh, trigonometry also I'll show you, I think, some sine 5t divided by t, how to do it. But that was also straightforward because I had to integrate once and I got it immediately without log. Now I got log, so I needed to use this limit concept. So I wanted to just expand on that. I wanted to illustrate that to you, so I took this example. Okay, let's proceed. What did we do? Ah, we saw periodic function. I think I spent a lot of time in periodic functions and their Laplace transform. More or less one hour, more than an hour. Uh, I think I will not tell anything further. Uh, I will not give any particular example now because we have already seen several examples. So let me just recall what does this formula say. This formula says Laplace of if f is a periodic function with period t. You know, understand what it means. It just means f of small t plus capital T is f of t for small t for all small t. That means after every capital T, f repeats itself. Classic examples for sine and cos. We also saw some other examples, like architecture examples like uh, some f of t is 2t up to 1 and afterwards it is 2 and then again f of t plus 2 is 2 and things like that. So, so they are all periodic functions. And uh, the plus of the uh, periodic function is given in here is the formula 1 by 1 minus e power s capital T. Not this capital T into integral of e power minus s t of t dt. Integration minus from 0 to t. The most important thing to note here is you see on the left hand side, by definition, L of t is integral of e power minus s t to f t. And look at it from 0 to infinity. So left hand side is an integration with limits from zero to infinity, infinite limits, infinite limits. Whereas right hand side is a finite limit. So an infinite limit, you are reduced to a finite limit. So that is the power of this formula. That is possible only because it's a periodic function. So what happens at infinity to a periodic function is captured in what happens in some finite part. That is what we exploited here. So Laplace of ft of a periodic function. F with period T is 1 by 1 minus e power s capital T into integral of e power minus s t of t dt. Integration is from 0 to capital T. So, this I will not show more examples because I think I have shown you enough examples last time. So. Um, step function. Yeah, this is very important and probably even though you have an inkling of this kind of thing, this notation is new to you. This Oliver Kelly said function or step function or linear step function is called. So we defined this uh, h t minus a is 0 if t is less than equal to a and 1 if t is less than equal to a. So remember, this is a funny way of defining the function. Normally I would say h of t. We are now say h of t minus a. Uh, many places, you know, the mathematics sometimes we don't use this. We use notation like h sub a of t. So that a will, h sub a will tell me what a is. For example, h sub t of t is 0 till t is 2 and 1 after t is 2. But uh, <coughs> this is the standard notation for engineering. And this is also equally used. So why I am telling you this is you might get confused here. Why, I, why am I writing h of t minus a? Normally I will write h 
So function I'll write h of p in a primary link a. That is just a notation, that's so all. You could have it. It will become x of a of p and you know the same definition. No problem. But this notation has some advantage as we have seen in some problems before. And uh, remember, x t minus a is to be thought of as a switch which was off till a, and at a it was it became on. It's not a periodic thing. Like a it becomes on, and we don't know when it becomes zero. To make it zero again, I have to do something else. I'm not doing that right now. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, this step function is like a uh, switch. It's actually a switch. And, uh, Mathematical analog of a switch is basically this step function of the uh, inside function. What was important about it? The most important thing was the inside shift here, which is Laplace of f of t minus a into h of t minus a is e power minus a s n of f t. That is what uh, is the formula. It's a very easy formula, it's not at all difficult. If you understand what these functions are, it's very easy. This follows them straight from the definition. But these proofs are not in your syllabus, so I won't write the proof. But you must remember this. What is it that you have to observe here? You have to find Laplace of f into h, where f and h both have same argument. That was one reason why I wrote h in such a funny way, not h sub a. Only for mathematics, we would have done that. But engineering, People have this notation f of t minus a into h of t minus a. Laplace of that is Laplace of f t. If I know Laplace of f t, I know Laplace of f of t minus a into h of t minus a. So all I have to do is multiply Laplace of f t by e power minus a. So if I get a, I get this a. This a, again, I'm emphasizing f argument of f and argument of h both must be same. For example, if it is f of t and h of t minus a, this formula is not true. So all our efforts are towards making this argument also t minus a. We have seen several problems, at least one or two problems in this direction. So let me illustrate this once more. Uh, and also I promise that I will uh, show, illustrate a problem with uh, when function has three pieces like this. Uh, I want to find the plus transform of this function where from 0 to 1, it is 1. 1 to 2, it is t. And greater than 2, it is t squared. Uh, maybe, let me see. I have 10 minutes. I will, uh, maybe it will not take much time. I will quickly show you how this function looks. Uh, it's not very difficult, I'm sure you know it. From, t, from 0 to 1, uh, the function value is 1. And from 1 to 2, function is uh, t and 2 onwards function is t square. So let me show you the plot of this graph. You know, the computer is slow, so it takes time to load this GOG graph. This is a very interesting graphing calculator. Uh, and you can, of course, put it on your computer or on your mobile. So what this function was, it's equal f of t is 1 between 0 and 1. So I will not spend too much time. I will quickly draw this graph. So 0 and t, 0 and between 0 and 1, inclusive 1, excluding 0, the function is 1. So that means from here, from here to here, including 1 and excluding 0, the function value is 1. So I will not use strictly function part now, but I will do an easier one for me which is basically show you this, no problem. So try to see, this is what a function is from 0 to x. And uh, from 1 to 2, it looks like p. That means it looks like a uh, straight line from here to 1 to p. So 1 to 2. So 1 to 2, it's a straight line like this. Right? This is what So I don't want to really show you this. So this is how it looks between 0 and 1 and between 1 and 2. And uh, what else? Uh, between uh, greater than 2, it looks like t square. Ah, 
So greater than uh, it's not a straight line. So B square and start value is two and end value is say so I am not a mistake. Um, let me check this function once more. Oh, P between one and two it is P. So a two should have been P. A two is P. Yeah, okay. P square. Yeah, okay. This is correct. What I done is correct. So let us try to. This function is correct. See this function is one between zero and one, t between zero and two, one and two, and t square beyond two. So clearly, this is not a continuous function because uh, you see a t equal to two, uh, left hand limit is two and right hand limit is four. That's correct. So no problem. This is what I have drawn is correct. So let me show it to you slightly. So this is how the function looks like. Okay, from 0 to 1 it is constant, 1 to 2 it is constantly increasing the same slope, from 2 onwards it is 2 equals t square. So this is the function. So this function, of course, you don't need to plot these graphs for your examination, but it helps to know these kind of graphs. You understand what you are trying to do. So for this function which looks like this that means signal is constant from 0 to 1 from 1 to 2 signal is constantly increasing from 2 onwards it is increasing but at a much higher rate this is what this function is i hope that is clear to you so this function i want to uh, find the laplace transform of this function how do i do that so i uh, promised this kind of thing where function has three different forms in three different patches so in this case for, for the patch 0 to 1 function looks one way patch 1 to 2 it looks another way patch 2 onwards it looks yet another way so that is why uh, you know, this is a different kind of function so, so i want to find laplace transform of this so I want to find Laplace transform of this. So how do I do that? I will show you this. This I told you already. Uh, I will just continue from there and not prove this kind of thing. F of t is this function f1 plus f2 minus f1. F2 is t and f1 is 1. So t minus 1. H of t minus a. A is 1. T is the first place where function is changing is 1. So t minus 1 plus f3 minus f2 that is t square minus t into h of t minus t to where i got i got this to this observe this what is this say for example t is between 0 and 1 h t is between 0 and 1 means less than 1 so t minus, t minus 1 is 0 h t minus t is also 0 so both of are 0 i get 1 so t between 0 and 1 i get between 1 and 2, this is 0, this is 1. It's t minus 1 is 1 because t is between 1 and 2 means it's bigger than 1. So this is 1, but it is less than 2, so this is 0. This is 1 means this product will become t minus 1. So 1 plus t minus 1, 1 will get cancelled cancel and it will remain with t. So t when it is between 1 and 2, the value of the function is t. And if t is greater than 2, t is greater than 2 means it's definitely greater than 1 also. So x t minus 1 is 1 and x t minus 2 is also 1 because t is greater than 2. Both these are 1 means I get 1 plus t minus 1 where 1 will get cancelled I get only t, t plus t square minus t, t, t will get cancelled and get t square that's what I get. So from this how to find the plus. So okay. So you understand this function in three pieces I can write it in one form. That is the advantage of the plus uh, heavy side function. So now if I want to find Laplace of this, I write the expression Laplace of t is linearity is Laplace of 1 plus Laplace of this plus Laplace of this. 
Laplace of this is very easy to find. Mm -hmm. We already know Laplace of one is one by x squared. Laplace of this, I use that formula. He said the shift formula. E for Laplace of f p f of p minus k into h of p minus k is something. I know if I know Laplace of f p, I know. So I can find that. And this one is the problematic part. The first two expressions are easy to find. This one is not. You see, if I write f t is equal to p square minus t, um, f t and h t minus t, they are different arguments. I want the same argument. So what do I do? I write p square minus t in terms of t minus t. How do I do that? I've done it here. You can see. Yeah, this is what we want to do. So p square minus t, I basically replace t by t minus t plus t. So I get e minus two plus two whole square minus e minus two plus two. We evaluate it in the a square e minus two whole square. We go square from here. So it is four two minus e minus two. So I get three e minus two. And here four minus two. <laughs> so I have done this thing. So e square minus e is nothing but e minus two whole square plus three e minus two plus two. So this is how I write my Bad looking function in terms of the way I want it. So then L of f t is nothing but this is what we saw L of 1 plus L of t minus 1 is 2 minus 1 plus L of t square minus 2 is 2 minus 2. t square minus t now I can write it like this. So if I write like that, this is Laplace of 1 is 1 by s, Laplace of t minus 1 is 2 minus 1 is e power minus s l t. This is the formula which I told you e power minus a s, a is 1 here, Laplace of f t. f here is p because this is f t minus 1 is t minus 1 so f t is t so a plus of t here i'll write this is my function here something square plus 3 times the same something plus 2 so t something square plus 3 times the same something plus 2 so t square plus 3 t plus 2 the plus of this this is easy to find yes i don't think i should be spending time on it. although i find this because these are all uh, directly written for using linearity i hope i have uh, Come to the end of this session. Yeah, it's four o'clock, and then I'll uh, stop here now. Uh, I hope I have given you a reasonable review of uh, Laplace transforms, all kinds of various kinds of problems I have shown. Uh, next is inverse Laplace transform. We'll do that from the next class. Thank you for your attention.